Hello, you're watching Studio Ken. Make sure you don't miss any episode of Studio Ken by subscribing to the YouTube channel. To subscribe, search for Studio Ken on YouTube, click subscribe on the bottom right of your screen and set a reminder. You can also watch Studio Ken on Diamond TV on Wednesday at 18.30 and on Saturday at 19 hours. Studio Ken, the home of Kennedy Gondway on YouTube. A switch from Belgian outfit Ostende to Rangers in Scotland has catapulted fashion Sakala back into the limelight once again. The Chipolo Polo Point Man grabbed the headlines with a move to Steven Gerrard's Rangers where he has signed a four-year contract. Zambians are excited for the 2017 Africa Cup Under-20 gold medalist who was also key at the FIFA Under-20 tournament that same year. His recent move has caught the eye of the head of state President Edgar Chagualungu, who praised the striker's rise. While he moves to Scotland, fashion is not the first Zambian to grab international headlines in Europe. Legends such as Kalusha Bualia, Charles Msonda, Collins Mbesuma, Emmanuel Mayuka, Andrew Sinkala, Moses Chone, and many others have been on this path before. Fashion's contemporaries in Patson Daka and Enoch Mwepu have equally had a fair share of glamour recently. Therefore, fashion will be adding his name to this list of impressive exports. But will that add pressure on him to deliver? Did fashion delay to come off the woods after that explosive performance at the under 20? Well, he is my guest on Studio Ken today and you answer those questions and many, many others. Hi, my name is Leah Banda. I'm a certified coach and speaker. You're watching Studio Ken. Don't forget to subscribe. Fashion, welcome to Studio Ken. Thank you so much for having me, it's my pleasure. Tell me about the move. How does it feel to make such a big move? I really feel good and uh, I really thank God for uh, this move that I've made and I feel like I've made it at the right time. And um, looking at the team I was playing for in Belgium, a lot of people criticized me after the move from Spartak to Ostende. You know, people thought it, it was a small team. They thought I'll come back, but uh, I thank God that he answered my prayers to make a big move to, uh, to Rangers. Yeah, it's amazing. How long did you pray for in order for you to finally move to Rangers? You mean how long I prayed to yes, God? to God, of course. You know, like my life has been like that mm. and uh, I've been praying, I think, ever since when I was young. Yeah, so I pray every day three times. So this is something that has kept me going and I believe I'll never stop. So I can't really say how long I've prayed for the move because uh, I know I have a big dream that I'm chasing and uh, God knows the covenant that I made and uh, where I want to reach, where I want to go. So this is something that I've been praying for even when I was young. And uh, it's not something new for me. It's not a surprise because I see these things in my dreams because I have, uh, I think you can see in my social media platforms, there is like dreams don't die. Yeah, so I see a lot of things about my future in my dreams. Yeah. How important is prayer in your life as a footballer and as a person? Yeah, this is uh, something that has really changed my life and I feel very comfortable with prayers. You know, like uh, when I started my career, like moving to, I can't say big team, but better looking at where I was playing for in the village. So I went there with a scripture of uh, Job 8 verse 7, which says, your beginning might be small, but your later days shall be great. So when I joined this team in, uh, in Sparta, everyone was laughing at me. They were laughing at my shoes, laughing at my clothes, but I believed what the Bible says. And I believed that my later days shall be great. I kept that word and I kept on fighting with uh, the scripture of Exodus 14 verse 14, which says, I'll fight for you, you only need to be silent. So I believe that God will keep on fighting for me. You talked about the covenant that you've made with God yeah. as far as your football career yeah. is concerned. Yeah. What covenant have you made with him? Yeah, so the covenant I made with God, 
I can't mention what I promised to God. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is something personal, but mm. I remember because I'm coming from a very poor family mm. and uh, it was very difficult even for us to survive. I remember we never had something to eat. We never had food. Mm. So I made a covenant with God that was 2013 when I said, uh, I won't say it, mm. but I asked God mm. to help me so that I should help people who I need, like where I'm coming from. And I should be a very good example to testify the goodness of God. Looking at where I'm coming from, people can't believe that I'm here today. People can't believe that now I'm in Europe, playing in Europe in big teams. So this is like I'm testifying the goodness of God. And people can see, I've been criticized there of using charms even in my village. Because when I was playing in my village, you know, uh, we had these old people in the village. Yeah, who are telling young players or maybe other players that will give you chance to play better. So I used to say no to that because I knew that I was with God. So when I was a kid, I was having dreams of me playing for the national team, even playing out of Zambia. When I was young, when I was poor, in the same poor compound. So even old people in the village, they started telling me that they would give me chance to use so that I should play good and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But because I said no, and they said, oh, you have better charms than us. So you've never used charms before? Never. How much of juju or charms exist in football? Because you approached yourself as you were explaining. Yeah. Yeah, so for me, I don't really believe in that. And uh, I've heard a lot of people talking about that. And uh, even when I was playing for Zambian Premier League team, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, some people wanted me to use those things, but I said no. And uh, for me, I don't believe in charms. I don't believe in juju. I you talked about um, your background having been very, very humble and yeah. that you were suffering, sometimes would even miss meals. Yeah. Tell me more about that. Yeah, honestly, Mr. Kenny, I came from a very poor family. I came from a very poor family and it was very difficult for us to survive. And uh, for us to survive, I was the one killing animals in the bush. I was a hunter. Okay. So that you were was a poacher. Yeah, not really a poacher because mm. a poacher is someone with a gun, mm. you know. So I used to hunt animals with dogs. Mm. Yes, yeah, so uh, it was like that and uh, very difficult to, to survive and I, I used to kill animals for the family to eat. That was at the age of 9, 10 to 16. Okay, and then how did you start playing football? I used to play football even there in the village. Yeah, I used to, ha to, to, to have time for myself. Like in the morning I can go into the bush to hunt animals and then later in the uh, afternoon I go for trainings. In the how about village. school? I used to do it. Yeah, it was quite difficult. It was very difficult. I think I never paid attention to school too much because uh, it was very difficult. You know, you can't go to school without food. It's, it's always difficult like that. How many are you in your family? Yeah, we are seven, uh, four girls and three guys. Are you the first one? The first boy. The first boy? Yeah, first four mm -hmm. girls and then... Okay. Yeah. Sticking with your family there, you described to me how you were hunting or you used to kill animals yeah. in order to feed your yeah. family. Who else in your family has made it at least to the level that you are in terms of education, in terms of uh, a formal job? Yeah, that's a very good question in my family. Nobody completed school. I'm the, I'm the only one. And uh, also in terms of football, I'm the only one. So uh, it's not difficult and I'm not complaining because I believe that God chose me to help my family and I tried to carry all the responsibilities of my families who never went to school, who never completed school, uh, they have nothing to do and I believe that I was born in this family to help them. But that's too much pressure. At the age of nine you're fending for your family, you didn't go to school. How have you managed? Uh, honestly, there is nothing like pressure. Like uh, in God we know uh, if you're with God, God will always provide for you. And uh, I remember my father one time when we didn't have food at home, he told me that there is nothing I can do. We don't have food, but you have to stay happy. And uh, even at this time, a lot of people ask me why I'm always happy. And the motivation my dad gave me when I was poor is the motivation that I'm keeping even now. So how many, more, how many days would you go for without food? I think uh, it was like two to three days. Yeah, two to three days, you're just having water. Hmm. Very difficult time, yeah. Okay. Very touching, I must yeah, say. Yeah. Um, you. Did you at any point know or see yourself playing in Europe? Honestly, at that time, when I was, 
in the village, I didn't know that I'll be there. But I used to have dreams of myself playing for the national team. And at that time, I was young. I was in the village, coming from a very poor family. I didn't have any idea of where those dreams would take me. I didn't know where, where I would go after, after a few years. So it was, uh, it was quite difficult, but I kept on believing in the, in the dreams and also the players. You know, I used to pray a lot, even now. So I believed in them, in the dreams. Okay. How did the big move, at least locally, happen from you leaving Chipata coming to play in Osaka? Yeah, honestly, I would like to start from um, how it started from the village to go to Chipata. Mm. So I was working with my dad in, in the, the village. field. Yeah, in the village. Wh which village is this? Chizimati. Chizimati. Chizimati it? village. It's in Chipalamba and Benjeri. Okay. In Chipata, the eastern part of the yeah, country. Yeah, yeah. So it's like uh, six hours to eight hours uh, with a bike. So my dad was listening to the radio and uh, he heard the announcement on the radio uh, saying uh, there is a, a team, they want players for trials in Chipata. And then my dad told me when we were working, like, I think you can do it. We have to try this because here in the village you have proved yourself and uh, people are criticizing you of using charms, but we believe in God, you always pray. Why don't you think maybe your prayers can help you even to, to make it in this, uh, in this team they want to make in Chipata? And then we didn't have money to, to use a car, maybe for, in terms of transport. And then my dad took a bike, yeah, and uh, we used one bike. Yeah, so it was like six to seven or eight hours on the bike. And then the, the, the difficult part was that the same day I went there, it was the last day of trials. So when we went there, the owner of the team uh, said, uh, I don't think this boy can play football. Because I was coming from the village, the hair was like crazy, and uh, the dress code was bad. When the players saw me there, they started laughing. I didn't know what to do. My accent was crazy, like, you know, because it's from different part of, uh, of Chipata, yeah, so people were laughing at me. But my dad believed in me and said, you know what, you can do it. You believe in God. If you don't forget what the Bible says, that God will fight for you. God will fight for you and this is the only chance you have. And from that time, coming from a poor family at the young age, I believed in God and even now I'm still believing, I'll keep on moving. So this is how it started, uh, the last day of trials. The boy from the village, the poor family, people were laughing at him. And then we started training. But the fun part was that I didn't have football shoes. I didn't know about football shoes. So my friend gave me uh, football shoes and uh, he only w had one and I had to take one shoe from a different person. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so... That's incredible. Yeah, mm. yeah. So, uh, but by the grace of God, Mr. Ken, everything is possible. Okay. I believe in Luke 1 verse 37, nothing will be impossible with God. All things are possible. And at that time, last day after this, I think they stayed there for two weeks for trials, and we went there the last day. And by the grace of God, the last training, I scored three goals in the first half, then five goals in the second half. This is how they picked me and the beautiful journey started. Which club was that in Chipata? Kumawa Stars. Kumawa Stars. Kumawa Stars. What division? It was in uh, third division. Third division. So yeah. how it was like? How much I can say? From Chipata, next thing we had was you were with Inchanga Rangers yes. and then Zanako. Yeah. How did all that happen? Yeah, so it happened really quick. Mm. Uh, unbelievable story that even my parents, even me myself, I couldn't believe it that things were moving so fast. Yes, yeah, so the manager from Inchanga Rangers called my dad. My dad didn't know about Inchanga Rangers like how they were doing at that time and uh, looking at where my dad was coming from so all what he thought was the first thing like what he told me he said i thought it was only about satanism you know they want to take my son they want to kill my son and stuff like that so he started quarreling with the manager on phone no oh. <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. said i don't believe how can my son go from here to nchanga rangers from amateur to first league that's first league in zambian football like it's the main league in Zambia. Mm. I don't believe that. And then the president called again from Changa Rangers, Mr. Siwali, and talked to my dad. Black hole. Yeah. And uh, talked to my dad, and my dad said, Fashion, I think this is the time. You have to take the chance. I don't know. I don't know these people. And by then, 
he didn't have WhatsApp, Facebook to see these people. So we agreed with my dad, like, I will run away from Kumawa Stars because the owner didn't want me to go. Okay. Yeah, so we agreed with my dad, like, okay, I'll run away from this club at night. So I, I think it was around 04. Yeah, I went directly to the bus station. And that's how I started off the journey to, to Chingola. And then from Nchanga Rangers to Zanako? To Zanako, yeah. From uh, Nchanga Rangers to Zanako, I mean, this is how you can see that God is really working because uh, normally players don't call coaches. You know, players don't call coaches. But after I had a good season in, uh, in Changa Rangers, that was in 2015, I had the courage to call the coach of Zanako. I did it myself. Yeah, I called him and I said, uh, I want you to give me a chance. I know Zanako, it's a big team. And I'm coming from a team which is like almost relegated. So I just wanted to give me a chance if I can do it. But I believe, and that was something that I already saw in my dreams. I knew that it will happen. So the coach just said, okay, I'll give you uh, two weeks so that we should see how the season finish. Let's finish these two games. And I knew it already that this is the way for me. So tell me about the moment you knew that you'd be joining Rangers. Uh, take me through the emotions. Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, it was such an amazing feeling. It was an amazing feeling. And uh, I remember praying to God yeah, after I had uh, the first conversation I had with my agent about Rangers. I was like, wow, it's happening. So I had to start having prayers at the same time, immediately after the call. Yeah, I started praying over it that it should happen, which I believe that God really answered my prayers. Were they the only club interested in you? No, actually I had a lot of teams. Okay. I had a lot of teams. So like? I, yeah, I had, uh, okay, I can't mention them, mm. but uh, I had two teams in the Premier League, which I had a meeting with them in England. Okay. I had a meeting with them and they explained to me how they want me to play. I had teams in France, like now they finished on top five, two teams in France. And I had a meeting with them mm. and uh, looking at how they explained to me and how Gerard explained to me how he wants me to play. So you actually spoke with Steven Gerrard? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So after, after Steven Gerrard talked to me, I believed that this is the right time for me uh, to make a move to Rangers. I how about, didn't doubt. How about the teams in England? Are they in the top four? The ones that Not top four. Okay. I think now they should be top 11, I think, 12. So okay, maybe. good. Yeah. yeah. A boy from Chipata. Yeah. Went to Nchanga Rangers at night. Yeah. In Zanako. <laughs> talking to Steven Gerrard. Yeah. I Tell mean, me. yeah, you know, this is the time where you understand, like, uh, God is really working. Yeah. I believe, you know, for me, these things don't really surprise me because I know that I'm with God. And like what God promised me in the Bible, I'll keep the word. And I know that big things are coming. And uh, if I can stay like this, being real to myself, and know that what I'm doing is right, I'm not trying to, uh, to do anything wrong against people, I know I'll keep going. So this is not a surprise for me to go to Rangers because God already showed me something big. What is it like to be the first Zambian player to play in the Scottish Premier League? Uh, Rangers are champions. Yes. And playing in the Champions yes. League. Being coached by Steven Gerrard. It's amazing. I mean, it's a very big, big thing. It's a true uh, dream come true for me. This is uh, a very big thing. And uh, I don't know how I can say it, but uh, playing for Rangers, it's better than playing for other teams in the Premier League. It's better than playing for other teams in French League. So... I believe I made the right decision, even if I can have these options again, if, if I can be given another chance to choose, I will still choose Rangers. Hi, my name is Leah Banda. I'm a certified coach and speaker. You're watching Studio Ken. Don't forget to subscribe. What is it that attracted you the most about Rangers? How the coach explained to me. What did he explain? How he wants me to play. And what did he say he wanted you to play like? <laughs> you know, there are certain things that I can't go into details. <laughs> <laughs> no, but at least the style of play, that you can tell me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did he say he wanted you to do, I, to be doing? Yeah. But I mean, others didn't tell you. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, this is something that I can't really say what yeah. he told me, yeah. what attracted me to go. But uh, 
Jela talked to me like a real man. Mm. And I knew that this is the man that can help me also in my career. Mm. Looking at the uh, Rangers, uh, the games I've watched in the past before the COVID, mm. I've watched a lot of games and uh, I already had a heart for them mm. because the fans, it's amazing. They have a great fan base. The club is amazing. One of the most one of the most successful clubs in the world. Mm. So, you know, uh, it took my heart. I was like, this is the team that will help me to go higher. What has your background taught you uh, in terms of application, yeah, yeah. real life application? Coming from Chipata, played in Zambia, you went to Russia. Yeah. Not many people yeah. cop in Russia. Yeah, the true. weather, racism, and then you went that's to Belgium. That's Finally, you are in Scotland. Yes. What is the relationship between your background and where you are right now? Yeah, so like what I've learned in life, uh, Mr. Gondwe, is to be humble. And uh, that's the most important thing that keeps me going. And the most important thing is prayers. Prayers are helping me to keep going. Uh, looking at myself, sometimes people blame me of being arrogant because they don't see me in some places. Or maybe you don't see me with famous people, I can say. But this is something that I made. I mean, that I made to myself. I made an argument to myself like... I don't want to do uh, anything against myself because of the level that I've taken in life or maybe because of the money. I want to stay humble to my family. I want to be the, the same boy, like the same guy who came from the poor family. I don't want to change. And uh, the connection from the poor family and looking at the level that I, I, I am now, it's something that has taught me a lot and I'll never change. Do you feel the pressure to perform given that different players have tried in Europe? At least. Your, your generation uh, has been consistent. We've seen other players, yeah. not all of them. I mean, Kalosha was successful, Charles yeah. Wilson at yeah. some point. Do, do you feel the pressure to perform where others have failed? No, honestly, you know what? I always try myself. I always try to be better than yesterday, but not trying to be better than others. So this is something that uh, I've tried every day. I always tell myself I'm the best but I'm not better than other people. So this is uh, something that I don't, I don't compare myself to other people who failed or who were successful in Europe from Zambia. I don't, I don't compare myself to them. I just believe I have my own life. I have my own lane that I need to take. And I just have to take care of myself and believe that uh, God pre is preparing something for me in the future. How easy is it for you to cope in the different countries that you've played in? Yeah, honestly, it's difficult. But uh, I always try to work on my uh, weaknesses. I always try to work on my weaknesses. So in every situation, it might a bad situation, but I always take it positive. And uh, I, can, I can explain something to you. When I was in Russia, it was cold. Uh, people talked about racism and stuff. I never paid attention to the cold. I never paid attention to the uh, racist. I never paid attention to that. I was just focused on my thing. So we were there, like, I think we, we were about four players from Africa. But I'm not, I'm not trying to say bad things against them. But because they were complaining about the weather, complaining about the people, about the racism, they never paid attention to the work. So this is something that I never thought about. I was like, OK, I'm coming from Zambia. I came here for football. Not about this and this. I can't control the weather. This is something that I found it here and I'll leave it here. But I need to get something good out of it. Being in those countries, one of the things that I would assume you'd miss is in Shema. And perhaps yeah. in Beva. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right way of pronouncing yeah. it, right? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How yeah. do you manage to cope uh, or adapt to the food and, and things like that? Yeah, you know, about the food, uh, I always try to keep myself healthy. So in terms of food, I don't, I don't really like eating shima. So I try to eat uh, things that can keep me healthy because you know, sometimes if you eat too much shima, you might have problems with weight or you know, it depends with what you are using. <laughs> yeah, so I always try to eat the right food that will keep me in shape for a long time. So I always try to, uh, to avoid sweet things or maybe things that has fat or something. So I always try to eat healthy and try to make sure that my weight level is always the same.
But when you come to Zambia on holiday, like you are, right? Yeah. Now, oh, do you oh. sometimes venture out to look for Mbeba? Do you eat Mbeba too? <laughs> <laughs> I used to. <laughs> do you still eat Mbeba? No. <laughs> <laughs> are you telling the truth? <laughs> yeah, honestly, yeah. I'm saying the truth. Okay. I used to. <laughs> okay. Back to football. How do you manage the high expectations? You merely going to uh, Scotland. Yeah. People are already expecting big yeah. things from you. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Uh you know, Mr. Gondo, what I can say is that when you are with God, you don't have pressure. When you are with God, you don't have pressure. And you know that God has already prepared a very special thing for you. And uh, everything that you are doing, you are with God. I can give you a scripture in um, John 14, verse 14. The Bible said, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it for you. So obviously, I'll ask good things to God. And I know that God will do it for me. So as I'm going to Scotland, I believe that what I'm asking God will give, will give them to me. What goals have you set for yourself? Uh, I always try to, to set high levels of standard for myself. So like last season, I was playing as a winger and um, I scored eight goals in uh, one of the best leagues in the world, Belgium League. And uh, this season, I was playing as a striker and I told myself, that I want to score double. Because last season I scored eight, and now I'm a striker, I need to score double. And this season I scored 16. Okay, good. Yeah. A lot of people knew about you internationally and even nationally yeah. when uh, Zambia hosted the under 20 yeah. in 2017. But at a personal level, you didn't immediately make that big move. Were you disappointed not to have uh, moved to a bigger league? Or is it all part of what you say God prepared for you? Yeah, you know, uh, people might look, it, uh, might look the situation in a different way. But when you know yourself that God is with you, you will never be disappointed. You will never be disappointed because you know that everything is already prepared. So you are just taking a step after step. So after, I think after the U20, I made the, the move to Russia. And uh, I was playing for the second team. And uh, I was the top scholar for the second team, but they never promoted me to the first team. They used to take players who were playing on the same position with me, but they were on the bench. But first team used to take them. They were promoted to the first team, and they never promoted me. Why? You know, I took it very positive. The situation, I took it very positive. I was, I was there without complaining, without blaming people. I was just there working. I can tell you in that situation, I appreciated Spartak because Spartak took me from Africa. And when they took me from Africa, I appreciated them for that. And I knew that another team, God will make a way to another team that would be very much interested in me. So what targets have you set yourself now that you're in Scotland? What targets have you set for yourself? This is a very, a very big club, very massive. And uh, I believe that with the support Rangers has, I, I, I will take a very big step in life. Okay. I will take a very big step in life. And the only way I can take a very big step is to work hard for the fans, to work hard for the club. What ambition or goals have you set for yourself now that you've joined Rangers? Yeah, I think uh, I still have a lot of work to do. And I think the most important thing is uh, to win trophies for the club and uh, to make sure that I contribute something. I need to add my values to the club. I think that's the most important thing. And I believe that uh, Rangers and the fans of Rangers, they can help me to reach my dreams. Looking at my dreams, I think I know. Okay. Yeah. Would you share those dreams? For now, I can't share my dreams, but uh, <laughs> we are going to have another interview soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. In as much as you are a very influential player yeah. in the U20 and later on the national team now, yeah. those that uh, criticize you or your critics say, you are too selfish. Yeah. When they expect you to pass, you want to go on the wing and shoot from yeah. there or cut yeah. in. Yeah. Are you selfish? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gondo, thank you for the question. Mm. To be honest, I'm not. Mm. I'm not selfish. The only thing people don't understand is that when you are playing as a winger, you have to dribble. Mm. You have to dribble and give problems to the defenders. So people don't understand what I was doing for the U20 was amazing. People didn't understand that it was a very beautiful time for me. I did everything. You know, one thing I can tell you here, I never shared this with uh, other people. 
But if you can ask Mr. Chambeshi how many times he used to call me if we have the game tomorrow in his room, mm. telling me fashion, you can do it. Mm. He never did this to other players. Why he was doing that to me? Every, every day before the game, fashion. Even one goal, Sani. Even if we have a game when we are playing, the way he was screaming my name, mm. fashion, even one goal, Sani. And how would you feel? You know, because I knew that he believed in me that I can deliver. And the only thing I could do is to deliver. That's all what he wanted. But people thought I was selfish, but I was getting a very big pressure from the big man. Were you feeling that pressure? I was feeling it, but uh, all what I wanted was to deliver. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about the national team. Zambia has failed to qualify for yeah. the Nations Cup. Yeah. Three times in a row. Yeah. How are you taking on that as a player? It's bad. Honestly, it's sad. I'm not proud of it. And it gives me pressure almost every day thinking about it. We look like failures, but God's time is the best. We have to prepare ourselves nicely and uh, know that we don't need to give excuses almost every game. Almost every game, all oh, this or oh, that. But I don't like that. We need to work. We need to work, and that's the only way that can take us to the AFCON. But what do you think has gone wrong? Three times is a bit too yeah. much. Yeah, there are certain things that we can share, Mr. Gondry. There's certain things that we can share, but us players, we know. Okay. Yeah. Your own generation, after winning the Under-20 yeah. Africa Cup, yeah. you went to the World Cup. Yeah. The next thing that people were expecting was that team to go to the Olympics, because yeah. then you yeah. graduated yeah, into yeah, yeah. the Under-23. You never did that. What went yeah. wrong? I think... Uh, I think what I can say was that, you know, if you remember, because we went to the AFCON for the U23 and the team wasn't the same. Mm. So they changed a lot of players and even the feeling wasn't the same, you know. So even the performance, it wasn't the same like the way we used to play for the U20. Yeah, so it was a different moment, a very bad time, I can say. What will it take for Zambia to bounce back at senior national team level? I think we just have to keep on working. You just have to keep on working. Each and every player needs to work hard and know that when you are called for the national team, you have to contribute something. It's, it's, yeah. Do you think we can go to the World Cup? I believe. I believe we can do it. There is nothing impossible with God. We can do it. We can do it. It's difficult to convince someone with that, much yeah. as you mentioned God there. Yeah. Because, I mean, the, the country has failed to go to the Africa Cup three times in a yeah. row. And World Cup is even tougher. What makes you think, other than God, that it is possible to go to the World Cup with this team that has failed to go to the Africa Cup? Yeah, you know, uh, I think Zambia, in, uh, I can say it would be a very good team. Zambia will have a very good national team. If you can see how players in Europe are performing and we are getting matured, we are getting better and better. So you expect the good results in a few months and we'll make sure that you'll see. I don't like to say a lot of things about what we will do, but you'll see it very soon. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about your private life a bit. Occasionally, we see you with um, a lady in yeah. pictures. Very, very occasional. Yeah. I must <laughs> emphasize yeah, not yeah. all the time. Um, is she your girlfriend? Are you married? Do you have children together? Yeah, so this is my wife and uh, I can say uh, she took over where my parents left. This is someone uh, who knew me uh, before football. Someone I met when I was poor, when I was still in the village. Yes, yeah, so, uh, we are married, we have a, a daughter together. So it's a very beautiful relationship. Yeah. How old were you when you knew her? And at what point did you propose? Uh, I met her the first time, that was uh, 2009. She was doing her grade nine. Mm, I don't even remember how old I was. <laughs> okay. But then, from the time that you met, have you seen other girls? No. So you've only met one person, known one, one person? Only one. Got married and you've got a child only together? Only one, yeah. Exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Tell me more about her. What kind of a person is she for you to be that loyal to her and vice versa? Yeah, exactly. So you know, like, how we met, mm. the first time when we met, we didn't talk to each other. So, but the fun thing was that she never forget what I wore at that time. And I don't forget the clothes that she wore at that time. What was so special about those clothes? So much so that even now you still remember that time that 
in I, that time. Yeah, I think that's the sign that the connection was there. Mm. I think that was the connection that came from God, like this is the person who is going to marry you. I think uh, this is why, because normally you can't just keep someone's clothes for a long time. It's someone you don't even know. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> Do you consider yourself the heights that you've reached as a rich person? No, honestly, I don't. I don't and uh, I'll never, I'll never consider myself as a rich person. You know what, what I want, Mr. Gondo, in my life is not to celebrate my riches. It's to celebrate the great personality that I have toward people. This is the only thing that I want to have. And uh, if people can be happy to see me because of the great personality that I have, I'll be very happy than people to celebrate the car I drive. And this is something that I always think about myself because looking at where I'm coming from, I know that I don't need to put manifest. I don't need to put manifest. I don't need to put uh, all these things that I have first. If I want to get or to buy expensive cars, I can do it. But what for? Mr. Gondo, if I can drive an expensive car to go to my village, if you see the people who are celebrating my success in the village, Mr. Gondo, they're poor. They're poor, and when I say they're poor, I mean it. There is no need for me to buy expensive cars. I will buy a good car if I know that I've done it for the people in my village. And I know that the dream will come true. And this is why God is blessing me. Some Zambian footballers have been known to live in poverty once they've retired. What are you doing in order for you not to be the next victim? Yeah, I think by the grace of God, uh, me and my wife, we are doing well. Honestly, it's only my wife who is always taking care of the money. Yeah, because she, she's the one who stays here in Zambia and she takes care of the money. And uh, this is the belief that I had even from the time I was playing for Zanako. Yeah, because I didn't want money to take charge of my life. And uh, my wife has been taking care of my money. So she's doing all the investment here. And uh, I'm very proud of her. To some people, money means they come or they will come new circles of friends. And you in particular, sometimes, have been accused of staying away from our local celebrities. Yeah, uh, that's a very good question, Mr. Kenny. And uh, to be honest uh, with my life, I don't put money first and I don't want to change my life. Uh, I want to stick to the same friends. I respect all the celebrities in Zambia, all the big names. I respect them. When it's time to meet, I can meet them. But I come here in Zambia only for a month or two weeks sometimes. And uh, I don't see my wife for five or six months sometimes. So when I come here, I have to spend time with my wife, with my daughter. I have to drive or maybe fly to Chipata to go and see my parents. So I always try uh, to share time with families. But when it comes to meet other people, I try and find time for them. But it's always difficult. So yeah, I know like a lot of people talk about me like uh, I don't want to see them or I don't want to meet them. But because we live totally uh, different life. You know, I'm not the guy who can drink. I've never been to a nightclub. And it's always difficult for me to fit in because I, I know that my life is totally different. Fashion, thank you very, very much. I what an amazing interview we've Thank had. you so much. Thank you, I appreciate it. All the best. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Leah Banda. I'm a certified coach and speaker. You're watching Studio Ken. Don't forget to subscribe.